since this happened? Has Boog had any issues with any other dogs? I've no. never had Boog have an issue with any dog. Okay. We just Not had a, food, a Doberman no... at the house, yeah. and he played just fine. He's never had an aggressive bone in his body. Is Boog kind of back to his normal self? Yeah. Okay. And have the two had any play dates since then? No. Have you kept Boog in your house since then? We've done everything possible. He has gotten out um, a time or two. How is this happening? My kids. We have very We have young a children. seven year old and a five year old. And I also babysit my goddaughter who's four. And they don't get my back door latched um, hard enough because it's an old house and they just nudge right through. If one door closes, the other one opens and the just dogs just sneak out. a little bit. And if it's not out. latched, they go whew, right out the back door. Boog's 90 pounds. I mean, I'm not going to lie. He's ate through a window seal and busted through all of our screen doors. It's yeah. not like on purpose that yeah. he's, we're letting him out and just being negligent. We've done everything. Well, we... so that's kind of what negligence is. It's, I had several other things to do. We didn't get the fence built in time. It's a difference. Negligence doesn't mean you're doing anything purposefully okay. or that you're doing anything outrageous. It means more run of the mill. I didn't do exactly what I should have to get this situation handled. So here's the question. What about a better fence? If that was in the budget, it would have it already, would have already been, done. been done. Got it. We've actually been talking about a privacy, a privacy fence to keep the dogs in and to protect the kids a little better because the fence is old. But like I said, we have three just kids. Just not tall enough. Yeah, we <laughs> have three kids. And, I mean, we just had our third, and it's just kind of we're a one-income home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, I actually worked two jobs at the time of the incident. That's why I wasn't home at 8.30 at night. Yeah. It's kind of just the run-of-the-mill funding-wise. Yeah. All right, I'm going to open this up to my colleagues. Thank you, Judge. I want to drill down a little bit on the theory of yours with respect to the statute that requires certain things to be done with respect to pit bulls. And your theory is that they didn't register the dog, and therefore they were irresponsible. Is that essentially it? That is correct. And Boog is their property, as is Kevin is our property, and essentially their property to damage to our property. At any point, we could have a friend over to her house and that have them over multiple times, but at no point should they punch us in the face. Um, That's true. That's <laughs> true. And there is one section of it says that at all times, the owner shall keep the pit bull confined. At all times when a pit bull is away from the property of the owner, the owner shall keep the pit bull securely leashed and either muzzled or in a secure temporary enclosure as that term is defined in section and another section. That's a pretty focused requirement with respect to pit bulls and you claim you were not aware of that. We've only lived um, in Springfield for like four or five years but Boog's never really gotten out and like caused any problems so we didn't we weren't under the... To me the issue is narrowing down to whether you're not following through on that ordinance was a negligent cause of what happened here. And that's something that I, I think my colleagues and I will have to discuss. I have nothing further. Parties are excused while we deliberate in this matter. We've reached a verdict. It's not unanimous. Let me start out by saying that uh, it's obvious that all four of you are pet lovers and care very deeply for your animals. And so much so that sometimes we forget that indeed they are animals and they act on instinct. But I want to say to the plaintiffs, it was a very kind thing that ended up a difficult situation for you. So the question that this whole thing boiled down to for us was the interpretation of this particular statute and how it impacted the concept of negligence. Because in order to hold the defendants liable, you have the burden of proving that the defendants were negligent in some way. And in that analysis, Judge Juarez felt that you were negligent in letting your dog out so much or so consistently, and but for the fact that your dog got out, this injury would never have happened. However, Judge Tavalde and I felt that under these circumstances, by letting Boog into your home on a number of occasions. You were assuming the risk that something might happen. Had you closed the door and say, go, go back home, and he brushed by you, then that would have been a different scenario for us. So with one dissent, Judges Tewalder and I have found that you failed to meet your burden of proof, and we dismiss your complaint. That's the verdict of the court.